the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today on this glorious Easter morning, we come together to renew our faith in God's love that comes to us because of our great celebration of Easter. Easter is what we believe as Christians, and Alleluia is our song. So as we gather, let us be conscious of God's tremendous love for us as he forgives us our sins because Jesus suffered and died for us. Lord Jesus, you are the stone rejected by the builders that has become our cornerstone. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the paschal lamb <clears throat> who takes away our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you and you alone are the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you. begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant we pray that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance 
who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach the, to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. There's no other day like it. There's no other event in the history of the human race that can ever be compared to it. The day of resurrection. In certain parts of Germany, the greeting today is not Happy Easter, but rather, Christ is risen. To which people respond, He is risen indeed. Capture that greeting. I say to you, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's do that with enthusiasm. <laughs> Christ is risen. That's what today is about, to be enthusiastic about what we believe. That's what Happy Easter says. And so the church celebrates this greatest feast because of the greatest feat the world has ever seen or will see. On this past Friday, we recall the tragedy of the crucifixion of Jesus. The early disciples of Jesus loved him and followed him wherever he went, giving up everything, even their families. Jesus was such a special person, and they craved simply to be in his presence. However, when he really needed that, him, when he really needed them, they abandoned him as he was arrested on trumped up charges and falsely accused of sedition. On that Friday, he died a terrible death as a criminal and then was buried in a borrowed grave. In his side was a deep gash from the spear that the soldier pierced his side. His hands and feet punctured by nails his brow and tangled mess of hair from the crown of thorns thrusted upon his head as was being mocked for declaring that he was a king and his back was punctured with open wounds from the scourging he underwent. That's how much Christ suffered. Even on his deathbed on a wooden cross, the soldiers mocked him and the people jeered him. 
and then he was buried. All seemed to have come to this end. It was over. But as we hear in the gospel, early on the first day of the next week, Mary Magdala, one of his disciples, went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been se which had sealed the tomb was removed. And so she didn't just go, she ran and went to the followers of Jesus, Peter and John, announcing, no doubt with trepidation and fear, that his body was missing. And then they both ran. Talk about enthusiasm. Discover an empty tomb with the burial cloths tossed aside. Try to capture their bewilderment, their reaction of excitement and wonder. Where is he? The one they followed and came to love throughout the land for three years, who spoke like no one ever spoke before, who did what no one ever had ever done, healing people, forgiving sinners, feeding the hungry, affirming the outcasts and raising the dead, thought that he was gone, having died on the cross. His death was the end of it all, but then they did not find his body in the tomb where he was buried. Not fully comprehending what had happened, the gospel tells us they saw and believed. And that's why we gather here today. Because we too have seen and have come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Years later, when Peter, who first saw the empty tomb, would speak about it, and we heard in our reading today, and I think it was so powerful a reading, his testimony, his public testimony about that resurrection morning, it's worth repeating. He said to the people, you know what happened, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all he did. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But this man God raised up on a third day and granted that he be visible to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. The testimony of an eyewitness. And so today, many centuries later, we do what has been done the last 2,000 years or so. We remember that moment when Jesus' followers found an empty tomb and came to realize that he who was crucified was no longer dead, but rose up fully alive as he would eat and drink with them, assuring them that indeed he is the living Lord. The tomb where Jesus was buried could not hold the Lord of history. So Easter is a day of beautiful lilies, bright colors, joy-filled music, and a day of great celebration. But above all, Easter is a day of renewed faith and new hope. As we realize in this celebration again, how blessed our lives are because of our faith in the risen Christ. As blessed as Peter's life was, so are ours. You know, often we hear the words, life is unfair. And for many of us, if not all of us, that is certainly true. This past year's pandemic has been unfair to so many people. Life was certainly unfair to Jesus, the most loving person ever to walk this earth. Good Friday was a long, dark night but that was not the end. It was followed by the brightest and most glorious morning of Easter Sunday. Last night at the Easter Vigil, it was proclaimed that Jesus Christ broke the prison 
prison bars of death, and rose victorious to new life. And that's what Easter does for you and me as believers. It brings us the hope that as many long nights we might have to experience on our life's journey, there's always a new morning. As a poet once wrote, hope springs eternal. And it surely does for all who believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Those first disciples who found the empty tomb shared the joy of Christ's presence with each other. Then as time went on, went about spreading the good news that the risen Lord Jesus came from God to bring us God's love, God's peace, to remind us of who we are. We are God's people whom God holds in the palm of his hands. Today is our time to try to be more like those first disciples who saw and believed, not only to celebrate the Easter moment, the resurrection of Jesus, but to be willing to go out and spread the good news of Christ living among us, offering God's love. We all know people who have yet to find the empty tomb. Perhaps you know people who lack faith in God's love because of life and what life has done to them. People whose lives are empty and without meaning. People who are just drifting along without any sense that God is with them. People who have given up on love, people whose lives are filled with fear, people who have no peace, people who have not yet to come to understand and appreciate the message of Easter, that God loves them. So faith in the Easter moment brings hope to all who are still chained by Good Friday's darkness and those who may still be living in the sealed tomb of Holy Saturday. You and I have to tell them that the Easter light brings love and light to their world as much as to our world, where too often hate and darkness seem to prevail and even despair. So despite the pandemic, we are going through, despite all the uncertainty of life, despite the threat of evil that lurks among us at times, we cannot give up believing in the joy of Easter. That's what faith is. And we cannot ever stop doing what those first disciples did, to hear Jesus calling us to be his witnesses to the new life that he offers, not only on Easter morning, but on every day of our lives. He invites you and me as we gather to worship God, to celebrate this day, to share his love in the world that desperately needs him. That's our mission. And that's why we celebrate Easter and be aware of who we are, people redeemed by the blood of Christ and people sent on mission to proclaim that. So let us all embrace this day with great enthusiasm and run to our friends and neighbors and proclaim to one another and to all we encounter, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Again, let us say that with great joy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
Please rise. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we celebrate, we have been buried with Christ in our baptism moment, that we may walk with him in the newness of life and be his witnesses in this world. Now that Lent has concluded, the church invites us to renew our promises made in baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his evil works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic church. And so I ask you on this Easter morning, my brothers and sisters, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the Lord of the evil one so that sin may never have mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. And do you believe in God, our I loving do. Father, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only Son who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again on this day from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now I will come among you to sprinkle you with that holy water that reminds us again of who we are, God's chosen people, and as I bless you with this water, I invite you to make the sign of the cross to renew your own commitment to be disciples of the Lord Jesus. On this great day of Christ's victory over sin and death, let us confidently present to God our loving Father the needs we have in our lives and the needs of all the world. Our response is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, for Pope Francis, and for all those women and men who in the name of the Risen Lord offer their lives in service to the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all catechumens and candidates welcomed into the church, and for those who have been unable to share in the Eucharist because of the pandemic, may they know and take comfort in the knowledge that nothing in the world may separate them from the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For rebirth of the human community, that the powers of death, war, poverty, and disease may be conquered by Christ's victory over the grave. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those persecuted for their faith, that the power of the resurrection may bring healing and renewal to the hearts of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are oppressed and burdened, especially the poor, the sick, those suffering from COVID-19, and those caring for them, that God will sustain them with love and let his healing touch fall upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed loved ones, may they now share in Christ's resurrected glory. We remember especially Jill Anderson and Donna Fontini. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us pause for a moment to pray for those special intentions in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. O God of life and love, hear our prayers that we offer to you with hearts filled with Easter joy. Give strength and courage to all who suffer and bring us one day together to share your everlasting glory and peace. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously. For Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, 
restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassionate, merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus gave us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. With joyful hearts now, let us offer each other a gesture of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the light, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord, on this special day with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing, and please respond amen to our prayers. May Almighty God bless you and yours through today's Easter solemnity, and his compassion defend you from every salt of evil and sin. Amen. May the Lord who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you today with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of Easter come with Christ's help and exalting his spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and yours this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended, go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Have a blessed and glorious Easter.